Warcraft universe is filled with a million different characters. Many of them are in the spotlight and have been throughout the expansions pretty much everywhere, but there are also some of them that are quite important, in fact are some of the most important characters in the lore, yet they barely have a spotlight on them. So let's take a look at some of the most key characters throughout Warcraft history that are mainly just regular NPCs that you probably didn't even notice while playing the game. Brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends, one of the most detailed and content-rich RPGs for your mobile device, also available on PC. Make sure to check out the link in the description for special rewards. Raid has 13 different factions, from dwarves to undead hordes and everything in between. My favorite is the Galleon Pact, well, because orcs, they're neither good nor bad, but neutral. You have the heavy hitters like Galak and the Dead Chanter, but there is also the Shaman there to support and revive. The coolest thing about Raid is that there is literally an endless selection of champions, even when you collect all of them physically, you can create an infinite number of combinations when building teams and skills and strategies. Right now the biggest update ever was launched Doom Tower with 124 and 12 seriously badass bosses to take on. If you want to get a huge head start, check out the link in the description and you'll get a free void champion, an XP booster, 50 gems, energy refills, an ancient shard and this awesome champion Bolvar. All the rewards will be here only for the next 30 days, so check out Raid Shadow Legends. Number 10. Drag High Mountain A torrent with one of the most interesting stories ever that actually fought the Lich King. So, Trag is a high mountain tauren that explored Lordran, and during his adventure, he fought a scourge leader that wielded the fabled Orb of Nerzul in order to revive new champions for the scourge, such as Frost Wills. Trag fought him, destroyed him, but also killed himself in the process. He now started hearing the voice of the Lich King and went back to his tribe to the shaman to help him, but instead of helping him, they tried to kill him. He escaped and ventured to Northrend and was drawn by the voice of his newfound master, and here on his adventure he met Troll and many others. Trag constantly defied the will of the Lich King, but ultimately he arrived at the Ice Crown Citadel. There, Artis himself tried to bend him to his will, but instead, the Torn attacked him and struck him directly in the chest. The Lich King was shocked as he just pushed him far off the Ice Crown Citadel where his body completely shattered, but was reconstructed with the orb and the voice of the Lich King was no more. Trag then joined us in a battle against Artis during Wrath of the Lich King and he made a small appearance with the Knights of the Ebon Blade and Legion, but that is about it. Now, you have a Torn that literally resisted the will of the Lich King and the voice at the peak of his power that struck Artis and that ultimately freed himself completely, yet he just seems like a random dead knight in the game. Number 9. Archmage Vargot You've probably seen this guy as one of the leaders of Deleran and Legion, but Vargot has been for decades one of the most important mages of Deleran and has been present in the lore. Long ago, as the Alliance expedition ventured to Draenor, he led the Kirin Tor mages, founded the Kirin Vor village in Farallon and studied the ley lines and magic of Draenor. As Nerzul went crazy and just blew up the planet, he and his Kirintor companions survived in what was now known as Nether Storm. During the Burning Crusade, Keltas attacked him and sealed him inside a tower, while the rest of the village was completely destroyed. Following us being him, Vargot returned to Dalaran and even had his own room and still has in the Violet Citadel. We've seen him helping us avoid Sodranor and in Legion he joined the Council of Six, essentially the leaders of Dalaran. Vargot was possessed by the dreadlord Katran Atir, was freed and ultimately, as Sergenas plunged his sword into Silithus, it was Archmage Vargot that carried one of the artifacts to cleanse the wound. He did get a decent representation, I can't really say that he didn't in the game, but Archmage Vargot is one of the most important figures of Deloran ever, sort of even similar to Antonidas maybe, a member of the old expedition as well as a mage with more experience than almost everyone else. Number 8. Haldron Brightwing You've probably seen Haldron standing around in Silvermoon, but 
Maybe you just saw him as one of the NPCs, one of the important NPCs, but just regular NPCs. However, Haldron Brightwing is actually the Ranger General of Silvermoon and the military leader of Qualtalas, the leader of the Far Striders, essentially one of the most important figures of the Blood Elves as well as of the entire Horde. In fact, it was Haldron that succeeded Sylvanas, as before her death she was also a Ranger General. Haldron long ago fought against the Amani, became a lieutenant in the battles against the Orcs, and during the Third War he became a Ranger Captain. Brightwing participated in the desperate defense, or should I just say slaughter, of Quotalas and was among a few of the notable survivors. However, as Lortemar became the leader, Haldron was the second choice for a Ranger General. Since then, he was in pretty much everything up to and including the Fourth War. Now, I can't say he isn't represented, as after all, he was the leader of the Forest Riders and the Unseen Path and Legion, but he's a lot more important than the game gives him credit. For. He is literally what Sylvanas was as a high elf and is one of the leaders of the entire Horde military as one of the most powerful blood elves. Number 7. Archmage Modera one of the most important mages, yet a character that barely did anything in the game. Archmage Modena is one of the longest standing members of the Council of Six, the ruling elite of Dalaran. She participated in so many important events. First, she helped uncover the disguised Deathwing that infiltrated the Alliance. She was one of the members to expel Kel'Thuzad. She fought against the Blue Dragon invasion during the Nexus War. Modena participated in the battle against the Lich King, and ultimately, she joined the Tyrus Guard, helping us defeat the Legion. Yet, despite all of these achievements, almost all Modera ever did was just stand around in Deloran, play a part in a few quests and that is about it. You didn't really notice her. Despite being one of the most powerful mages around on all of Azeroth and essentially one of the rulers of Deloran, I really can't say that she got that much of representation in the game. Number 6. Nazgul in my opinion, the character that suffered the biggest injustice as everyone that played Warcraft 3 knows and remembers this guy, Nazgul is the son of one of the most famous orcish warriors in history, Kash Drakor of the Frostwolf clan, and he served more than likely in the orcish invasions the first and the second four. His first rise to prominence was when Troll freed him from the camps and since then he became his most trusted advisor. Nazgul followed him to Kalimdor, fought at the Battle of Mount Hygel, he was in charge of security when Orgrimmar was built, he fought against the Kul Tirans, ensuring the Horde could lay claim to Durotar. In classic, Nazgul was a general and a chief of security and one of the most powerful and important figures of the entire Horde. However, in TBC he was sent to Trollmar where he played a medium or small sized role and since then no one really cares about this guy anymore. He made a tiny appearance in a ceremony in Legion but that is about it. Honestly, as one of the founding members of the Horde, I feel like Nazgul's character really suffered a massive injustice with a lack of representation in the game. Number 5. Chandris Feathermoon Chandris is a bit different. She definitely got a lot of appearances in the game, but I feel like the majority of people don't really know the full extent of her lore and just see her as a random Night Elf Sentinel, sort of an important NPC, but they don't really know who she really is. However, Chandris is literally one of the most accomplished hunters ever and is thousands of years old. She lost her family in War of the Ancients, faced off the forces of Archimonde, killed dozens of demons with her arrows, after the war, became a captain of the Sentinels. She was in the War of the Satyr, fought to Rachel Vorgan, was the right hand of Tiranda for thousands of years. During the Third War, she was essentially in all battles and faced off against Archimonde once more. Chandris became a general of the Sentinels, essentially the leader of the entire Night Elf military, and she participated in everything since, fought off against Garrosh, defended Terramore, ventured to Alternate Draenor, joined the Unseen Path, faced off against against the Horde on Darkshore and is now venturing into the Shadowlands together with Tiran. So if you haven't figured it out by now, she has a lot of experience, a figurative ton, and I'd say she might as well be in top 5 most experienced fighters on all of Azeroth just due to her age. Now, I can't say Shandris didn't get a representation in the game as she did, but I do feel like people don't realize just how important this character really is. Number 4 Etric. Etric 
in my opinion, is in the top five most notable orcs ever. I see him sort of as like a discount Maddox Sarfang, is he is incredibly similar to him. Idric is a Blackrock orc that was a lieutenant of Blackhand, together with Orgrim and, of course, Verox Sarfang. Then, as Orgrim took over, he joined him, and as the war was ultimately lost, he was one of the few orcs that escaped into the wilderness and was never captured. Unfortunately, Idric was found and was almost killed by the humans, but Tyrion discovered him and saved him, which caused Tyrion to be forced into exile. He was ultimately saved by Troll's Horde and has followed him ever since. Idric was a critical advisor to Troll and literally participated in every single event since the first war. He was in Northern Battle in the Lich King, he sided with the rebels against Garrosh, he fought the Legion, and most recently he was the one that recruited the Mega Orcs into the Horde. Idric is essentially Sour Fang number two, pretty much the same amount of experience, essentially the same military and political position within the Horde, and even he has a book written about him and Tyrion. Yet, when compared to Ferok, he barely got any attention, and I'm guessing few people see him for what he really is, and mainly just see Idric as an important NPC in the throne room, but not much more than that. Number three, Meryl Felstorm. Meryl is one of the oldest undead humans. More than likely, he was one of the first 100 mages that the High Elves trained as they spread magic knowledge to humanity. He participated in the Troll Wars 3000 years ago and actually died, but managed to keep himself alive through magic. He is the first undead that we know he has nothing to do with the Scourge nor the Forsaken. Meryl Winterstorm, as was his old name, helped found the Council of Tiraswell, one of the most important organizations ever, and was recently possessed by a dreadlord that he allowed so that the two wills could battle each other. Since then, corruption said he changed his name to Metal Felstorm and exiled himself, but unfortunately, the demon returned and he attacked Delrin. He returned in Legion and reformed Tirisgard. Previously, he also helped us battle Chogal. Yet, with his very long history and all the accomplishments, all he ever really got was a minor role in the Mage Order Hall in Legion, and that is about it. Number 2, Arator the Redeemer. Not much of a powerful character, but one of the most important ones, just by the fact who his parents are. Arator is a half elf, half human, and the son of Valyria Windrunner and Tyrellian. They had abandoned him quite early on, and he only grew up knowing legends of his parents as they had joined the Army of the Light after disappearing as Draenor was completely destroyed. Arator became a paladin, independently searching for his parents, then during TBC as Outland was once again accessed, he continued the search, this time from Honor Hold. As Tyrion fell on the Broken Shore recently, Arator joined the Silver Hand and then participated in the ultimate battle against the Burning Legion. He finally managed to get in touch with his parents, was imprisoned on Escara by the demons, and ultimately reunited with Relian and Illyria. However, since then, Barely anything happened with his character, he's mainly just seen as an NPC standing around, despite being the son of two of the most important characters in the entire Warcraft series. Additionally, he is also one of the few remaining members of the fabled High Elven Windrunner family, one of the most important families in the history of all of Qualtalas. Interestingly enough, he is also the nephew of Sylvanas. And lastly, number one, Gerard Shadowsong. Sherrod only recently got some screen time, but few people know that this guy is one of the most important night elves ever. Sherrod Shadowsong is the younger brother of Maiev and one of the biggest heroes of the War of the Ancients. He commanded the Caldari resistance as his mere presence raised morale, he saved the life of Holmheim Mountain, fought Achondrius, and ultimately even Archimonde himself. Sherrod was even the one that discovered that Illidan created a second Well of Eternity. For his achievements, he was hailed as one of the bravest of the Night Elves, but following the conclusion of the war, he self-exiled himself, living in the wilderness for nearly 10,000 years. He returned shortly before Cataclysm, he had a minor appearance in Cataclysm, and a bit larger one in Legion, as well as Battle for Azeroth. Despite getting decent mentions in the game, I don't feel like his appearance really represents him accordingly, as this guy is literally up there with Malfurion, Illidan, and Maiev. Thank you for watching! Check out the top 10 most powerful warlocks by clicking on the screen and also check out the Academy for videos on real world history and science. See you next time!